Good evening, afternoon, morning, or any other time to you loyal mother factors, and welcome to this rather British version of 101 Facts. I'm your designated subject, Sam, and today I'm here to talk about the country of James Bond, Sherlock Holmes, Doctor Who, Churchill, The Beatles, Sean Connery, Harry Potter. Yes, thank you, Hugh. I'm here to talk about the United Kingdom. But how much tea do we drink as a nation every day? How many times do we have sex in our lifetimes? Do we have sex with the tea? Two out of three of those questions are gonna be answered, so kneel before Her Majesty the Queen and prepare to receive a knighthood from the facting empire, while eating a crumpet and mainlining swan blood. Lovely stuff. This is 101 Facts about the United Kingdom. Number one. In case you thought this was a video about me calling a knight named Ed Kingdom, it ain't. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is a sovereign country consisting of England, Wales, Scotland and, guess who, Northern Ireland. Number 2. The Union Jack is a Marvel character, but also a flag. Rather cleverly, it's the flags of England, Scotland and Ireland's St. Patrick's Saltire flag all merged together. Sorry Wales, there was no room for a dragon on there. Number 3. St George's Cross is widely known as the Flag for England. It is a red cross atop a white flag and came into use in the late 18th century. Sorry, I'm not sure why I'm doing that dusty old librarian voice, but I can't seem to help it. Number 4. St Andrew's Cross is the Flag of Scotland. Come on, stop doing that voice. According to legend, it's a cross because of a battle between the Scots and the Angles. Nope, not those kind of angles, although that is a cute one. During this battle, the clouds in the sky apparently formed into an X, thus marking the flag. Number 5. This is Wales's flag, which is a lot, lot better than the others, mainly due to the fact it has a dragon on it. But why? Welly well well, my sugar plum fairy. It was the symbol of the King of Gwynedd, named King Cadwallader. Number 6. Northern Ireland doesn't have its own flag. Sorry, Northern Ireland. Number 7. England and Wales were united in 1536 like ex-lovers. Then Scotland joined in in 1707 like a swingers party that created Great Britain. Renamed the United Kingdom in 1801 when Ireland was added too. Number 8. As of 2013, the population of the UK is 64.1 million. England has 53 of those millions, Scotland has 5.3 million, Wales 3 million and Northern Ireland 1.8 million. Number 9. The UK is close to 95,000 square miles. Number 10. The UK's longest coastline is around 5,000 miles. The exact distance the proclaimers will walk for you. That's nice. Number 11. Our highest mountain is Ben Nevis because we like naming things Ben in the UK. Benny Boy can be found in Scotland at just over 1,340 meters high. Number 12. We have, and this is an actual measurement, a f ton of history in the UK, dating all the way back to 6,500 BC. All over the UK, you'll find monuments marking its history, from Stonehenge to Buckingham Palace. Number 13. Perhaps because of this, and because its residents are kooky folk like me, in 2010, 29.6 million people visited Britain, spending an average of £563 per person and stayed seven days on average. Number 14. We also can't move for bloody castles. There's actually six to seven hundred all across the country, and no, alas, I don't live in one. Number 15. We also have plenty of places of enlightenment and worship. Hubs. Why? Why is that bad? What do you think I meant? By the end of 2015, there were around 52,750 of them. I bet at least 50,000 of them were named the Red Lion or something. <laughs> Number 16. Oh, according to the Daily Mail, which is something you shouldn't read, by the way, there are 518 pubs in the UK with the name Red Lion. Well, you can keep your Red Lion, mate, because I know which pub I'll go to to wait for things to blow over. Go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. Winchester for life. Number 17. There are stranger pub names out there, including the Bunch of Carrots in Hereford, the Quiet Woman in Buxton, and my father's moustache in Lincolnshire. Number 18. English is the official language spoken throughout the UK, clues in the name. But there are other official languages too, such as Welsh, Scots, ordering a kebab while drunk, and Gaelic. Alright, who's laughing at Gaelic? Own up. 
Number 19. Contrary to what some believe, we're not exactly led by the Queen anymore. The United Kingdom is a parliamentary democracy, which means the government is elected by the people. Number 20. There's a general election once every five years to find out who our next PM is going to be, like a very long, tedious and very boring talent show. The Prime Minister, or the PM as I just said just then, leads the government with the support of the Cabinet, not a literal Cabinet, as well as Ministers and Members of Parliament. Number 21. The UK has had 76 Prime Ministers, including the Great Winston Churchill and, um, others. Number 22. Uh. The first female Prime Minister was Margaret Thatcher, who seemingly had a hoot. So much so, she ran from 1979 to 1990 and is the longest serving Prime Minister for over 150 years. Number 23. The United Kingdom joined the European Union in 1979, but, um, not anymore. <laughs> Well, not yet anyway, since we're apparently brexiting the F out of there due to a referendum in June 2016 because reasons. And a bus, mainly. Number 24. In fact, Collins Dictionary made Brexit, which sounds like a breakfast cereal specifically designed for people with diarrhea, but is actually an admittedly terrible fusion of the words Britain and Exit, their word of the year in 2016. Number 25. Her Majesty the Queen of England II is the head of state in the United Kingdom. As a constitutional monarchy, Her Majesty does not rule the country as such, but the royal family fulfills important ceremonial and formal roles, like celebrating lots of birthdays and showing off their children and corgis. <laughs> Love you though, your Madge. Number 26. Along with our Queen Lizzie, there's a whole family of royals. Royal. Royal. Yes, thank you, Lord. Right at the top of the family tree is the arrogantly named Alfred the Great, who defended his kingdom against the Vikings. Number 27. Windsor Castle, where the Queen spends most of her time, is the largest royal home in the world. It's also the oldest continually inhabited royal residence in Britain, don't you know? Having been built by William the Conqueror around 1080 AD. Number 20. <coughs> Nowhere in the UK is more than 75 miles away from the sea. Which is quite lucky, really, given that we do like to be beside the seaside, or we do like to be beside the sea. Except me, actually. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Number 29. London is the capital of England and the UK, by the way. Uh, just in case you weren't aware. Hey, it's a fact, can't sue me. Number 30. Just in case you visit and need to know the laws, you need to be 18 to drink alcohol and you're not allowed any drugs at all. Not even marijuana. Soz, chaps, but hey, have a cup of tea instead. Number 31. Rather stereotypically speaking of tea, every day us British drink 165 million cups of tea, which is over 20 times more than the average American. I think I'm responsible for at least an 18th of that figure. Clive, get me a tea. Number 32. When you think of British food, you probably think of this. Or this. Well, what about this? You should, because the United Kingdom recently named chicken tikka masala as a national dish, which is a spicy curry created in Britain and is actually unheard of in India itself. Number 33. Speaking of fish, and indeed chips, the first fish and chips restaurant was opened in 1860 in London by a Jewish immigrant named Joseph Malin. So thank you, Joseph, for giving me that sweet, sweet newspaper-wrapped butter-drenched heart attack. I owe you one. Number 34. Speaking of heart attack, a popular national food of Scotland is haggis. Sheep, heart, liver and mint encased in a stomach. Mmm. You want some haggis, Americans, hmm? Do you? Do you want some haggis? Number 35? Well, that's too bad, because it's illegal to import haggis from the UK into the US as the American government has declared that sheep lungs are unfit for human consumption. I mean, how dare they? Have they tried American chocolate? It tastes like disappointment in a bar. Number 36. The Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square is presented every year by the people of Oslo in gratitude for London's assistance during World War II. Number 37. James Bond, or Secretive Jimmy as I call him down the pub, is one of Britain's national heroes. And one of the first people I did a hunt one fact about, don't you know? His code name, 007, was inspired by the author Ian Fleming's bus route from Canterbury to London. So there you go, not only do you know that now, but you also know the bus route to get from Canterbury to London. You're welcome. Number 38. The London Underground Subway, or the Tube, 
is one of the oldest subways in the world. The 409 escalators and tube stations cover the distance every week, which is approximately equivalent to several trips around the world. So you probably can't ride them all in a day, I'm afraid. Sorry to quash that dream. Number 39. Despite being named as such, more than half of the London Underground is, in fact, above, not under, ground. Number 40. The longest escalator in a tube station, incidentally, is at the station Angel, and is the fourth longest escalator in the world. I should know, I used to ride the bloody thing all the time, but then I realised that skiing down it is far better, like this guy does. Number 41. A new breed of mosquito was found in the tube tunnels in 1998. Scientists believe it mutated from a species that came to the London Underground when it was built in the last century, and has since evolved into a separate species. The meaning of life. Oh hey, London, by the way, hosted the 2012 Olympics in... uh, 2012. This was the third time they did so, the first in 1908 and the second in 1948. Number 43. Wales is actually home to a town called... Oh, bloody hell, really? Do you expect me to read that? Okay, let's give this a go. Le Lanfair Lanfair Paul Gwyngith Go where Queen Drobbleth Le Lanfair... Oh, screw it. Naomi Watts, help me out here. Le Lanfair Paul Gwyngith Go where Queen Drobbleth Lent to Silio Go 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 Thank you. This translates to St Mary's Church in the Hollow of the White Hazel near a rapid whirlpool at the Church of St Tisilo near the cave which is just as snappy. You go, Wales. Number four. There's only a 21-mile gap between England and France, and the countries are connected by the Channel Tunnel, which opened in 1994. It's the world's second longest underground tunnel, and no, you can't see fishies out the window like I thought you could. I know, I was just as disappointed as you. Number 45. John and Mary, no, not those two, that was so last month, have been revealed as the most popular male and female names of the last 500 years in the UK. I'm sure Sherlock has joined them now, along with twerk and Brexit, probably. Hashtag satire. Number 46. A new study shows that Smith, Jones and Williams have been the most common surnames for nearly 180 years. So there's going to be plenty of twerk Joneses out there soon. Wow, that kind of sounds like a detective. Twerk Jones on the goose. Number 47. Speaking of twerking, uh, kind of. According to The Sun, most Brits will have rumpy pumpy love time, sex, a total of 4,239 times in their lives. Just one more time for me and I've beaten the average. <laughs> Just kidding, it's around 4,239 more times and a half. Number 48. When the UK was asked what our favourite steamy position for sexy time is, we answered near unanimously, with 31% of us saying, I don't have a favourite. Wow, we are a decisive bunch, us lot. Number 49. We bloody love fish and chips and Yorkshire puddings and gravy and crumpets over here. The stereotype is true. Which is probably the reason why England has the highest rate of obesity in Europe. That said, we do spend a lot of calories queuing up for stuff. Wow, I'm being really racist to myself here. Number 50! <laughs> the United Kingdom has brought some of the world's greatest musical artists ever, including the Beatles, Robbie Williams, the Rolling Stones, Queen, Black Sabbath, Robbie Williams, David Bowie, The Who, Oasis, Iron Maiden, Robbie Williams, and of course, the Spice Girls. So, yeah, you're welcome, rest of the world. Number 51. In fact, the Beatles are the highest selling and most successful musical artist of all time. And they came straight out of the UK. Liverpool, to be precise. Number 52. TV and soaps are also a big dealio. The most watched TV episode of all time in the UK was of a soap set in London called EastEnders. Specifically, an episode in 1986 on Christmas Day, which pulled in 30 million viewers. <laughs> Number 53. <laughs> We also love our comedy over here, given that we invented the concept, come at me bro, and have produced many, many funny shows and sitcoms, this not included. A YouGov poll found that the sitcom considered the funniest and most popular is only Fools and Horses. Number 54. In 2014, 10,908 umbrellas were lost on the London Underground, as well as 20,000 mobile phones. So if you need to get dry and get a new phone, hop on the tube. You never know what you might find. Number 55. 
a human skull and prosthetic legs have also been found in London without their owner. Oh, Bethnal Green, that's where I left my human skull. <laughs> I ruined that performance of Hamlet using a basketball instead. Number 56. It was just above a pub named the Red Lion on Great Windmill Street in London that Karl Marx made his Marx <laughs> by drafting the Communist Manifesto. It's now a B at one cocktail bar, which is, uh, I'm sure what he would have wanted. Number 57. Football, or soccer ball, as it's known, is a massive part of UK culture. In fact, it's such a phenomenon that some YouTube channels do videos about football daily. You're welcome, guys. There's your shout out. Now, stop flying my inbox with pictures of Joe naked, please. Number 58. We love football so much, as a nation, not Clive and I individually, we're more into bowling, that there are over 5,300 clubs, 7,000 teams, and over 100 stadiums across the UK. Number 59. But not everyone likes football. Many kings, such as Edward II, III, and IV, and Richard II, wanted to actually ban the beautiful game completely. Number 60. Even Shakespeare apparently disapproved of football, specifically mentioning it with disdain in his play A Comedy of Errors. Your defense is terrified. Shakespeare's on fire. Is that how you do it? Number 61. Speaking of willies, sausages. <laughs> that was the most immature thing I think I've ever done. Sausages are very popular here in the UK. They were introduced by the Romans around AD 400, and there are now 470 recipes for British bangers. Number 62. Our smallest city is St David's in Pembrokeshire, with a population of 1,797. In my mind, it's exactly like hot fuzz over there. Number 63. The highest temperature ever recorded in England was 38.5 Celsius, which is 101.3 Fahrenheit. <laughs> hey, 101. On August the 10th, 2003, every single man in the UK probably took their top off and got immensely sunburnt, because that, after all, is the British way. Nintendo 64. However, the UK's weather is renowned for raining all the pissing time, and yes, that can be true. In fact, the Met Office found that in Snowdonia, the Lake District, and the Scottish Highlands, they receive more than four metres of rainfall in a year. Four metres! Number 65. Le Francais was actually the official language of England for around 300 years, from 1066 till about... 1362. Sounds like I was there, or I wasn't actually, I'm not that old, although sometimes I do feel it. Number 66. If you think we're all stuffy and boring over here, well let me tell you we're bloody not. In fact, the world's second largest second-hand book market can be found in Hay on Wye, a small village at the border of England and Wales, so yeah, I think we know how to party, thank you very much. Number 67. The village is also famous for proclaiming itself independent from the UK in 1977, with a man named Richard Booth proclaiming himself the king, just as I have of this VO booth. Bow, loyal subject. Not you, Clive, you're too close. Number 68. The UK, or rather Britain, used to put a flag down and claim, basically own slash take over slash destroy, many of today's independent countries to add to the vast British Empire. It wasn't pretty. Sorry about that. Uh, how bad? Number 69. Yeah. During World War II, decolonization took place, and the British Commonwealth was formed, which unified these countries into an intergovernmental group. 54 nations were a part of the Commonwealth, with Queen Lizzie at its head. Number 70. We here in the UK love nudes. Uh, news, sorry. So much, in fact, that the average person in the UK gets through around 38 kilograms of newspapers every year. Number 71. People from the city of Liverpool, such as the Beatles, are often known as Scousers. The name is short for Lobscouse, which was a Scandinavian stew eaten by the sailors who visited the port. So yes, Liverpudlians, you're named after food. The more you know. Number 72. This. Now this is Big Ben, isn't it? <laughs> Wrong. This is Big Ben, the bell inside, not the actual clock. The clock tower itself is called Elizabeth Tower. Okay, there. Scored you there, didn't I? <laughs> so I don't know why I'm so aggressive, sorry. Number 73. East Peckham in Kent, oh sorry god, I mean Kent, has a unique claim to fame. It's the place where the first ever speeding ticket was issued in January of 1896. A man named Walter Arnold was spotted doing 8 miles per hour in a 2 miles per hour zone. Go go speed racer. But was easily apprehended by a policeman riding a bicycle. 
Number 74. Before we had the pound sterling, we had other monies that sound like the stuff you find in Gringotts. We had farthings, shillings, and pennies. Four farthings equaled a penny, 12 pence equaled one shilling, and 20 shillings equaled a pound. So if you ever go back in time, remember that. Number 75. Birmingham is the second largest city in the UK. Chances are you've probably been to a Birmingham as there are 30 other places called Birmingham around the world and off it. There's even a crater on the moon with the same name, although you probably haven't been there and if you say you do, I frankly don't believe you. Number 76. If you're visiting Norfolk, watch out for jaspers, also known as wasps, and try not to step on any dodmans, also known as snails. The more rural parts of the county have their own words for many things, including ladybirds, known as bishy barney bees, and money, known as cuter. I wonder if they have a word for the uh, pedestrianisation of Norwich city centre. Scum. Subhuman scum. Number 77. According to British law, it's still perfectly legal to kill any Scotsman who enters the city of York if he happens to be carrying a bow and arrow. So, yeah, watch out for that, Yorkish Scottish archers. Number 78. Killing a swan is a lawful offence in the UK, even if the swan started it by insulting a wife, or perhaps saying your pants look a bit too tight. This is because swans legally all belong to the crown, and therefore a property of the queen, so killing or injuring a swan carries a penalty of £5,000, or six months in jail. Number seven. Oh no, sorry, number 79. In St George's Churchyard in Gravesend, there's a life-size statue of Princess Pocahontas, the daughter of a Native American chieftain who is buried in the grounds. She was visiting the area with her English husband, but died of fever, probably not Saturday night fever, but, you know, the lethal one, in 1617. Number 80. Unlike places like, say, Australia, our wildlife is very unlikely to kill you, unless you're on the Hogwarts grounds or any high street after 9pm on a Saturday. Our wildlife includes foxes, badgers, owls, squirrels, ducks, robins and hedgehogs. No killer spiders here, <laughs> yet. Number 81. That being said though, we do have a native venomous snake in the UK called the Adder, but it's pretty meek and will only bite as a last resort. Nobody has died from its bite in over 20 years. Number 82. Eating a mince pie on Christmas Day was set to be illegal in England, thanks to Oliver Cromwell. The law was put in place in an effort to stop gluttony. However, the ban was abolished when Charles II became king, so never came into practice. Number 83. The national anthem... <laughs> No, not you, Radiohead. The other one, God Save the Queen, or King, was first performed publicly in 1745 at London's Theatre Royal in Drury Lane, after a performance of Ben Johnson's play The Alchemist. There you go, that'll help you on a pub quiz. Number 84. These three golden lions are the symbols of England's crest, and also appear on England's football team's symbol too. All together now. Three lions on the shirt. The lions come from Henry I, known as the Lion of England. He is a lion, and you're gonna be him roar. Oh, 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 oh. Number 85. This random assembly of stones is known as Stonehenge. Hello, Stonehenge! Yes, thank you, Doctor. Stonehenge stands on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire and is a very popular tourist spot to this day, but nobody knows why it was built, or even how. Number 86. What we do know though, apart from that the Pandorica is very nearby, is that it was built around 3000 BC and construction was spread over many hundreds of years. The last changes were made in the early Bronze Age in around 1500 BC. Number 87. The British Library in London is the largest library in the world. It has more than 170 million items catalogued, and hopefully soon in the future my autobiography, Love is the Oldest Law, wrote the Sam and Jen story. Number 88. The United Kingdom is one of the only countries in the world without a written constitution. Of course, we still have laws and stuff. It's not quite anarchy in the UK. Sorry, Sex Pistols. But nobody's actually bothered to write the laws down. Number 89. England's first telephone directory was published in 1880 and only had 248 names and addresses in it. Number 90. In its past, London has had some far flashier names, including Londinium, Ludenwick, and Ludenburg. Number 91. The UK is also the home of the wonderful NHS, or National Health Service. This provides free healthcare for all citizens of the country due to being paid for through taxes. Which is nice, because if you trip over a hedgehog and scuff your knee, it won't cost you anything. Result. Number 92. 
There are 1.4 million employees within the health service, helping out those who have fallen over hedgehogs everywhere. And they're all amazing. Thanks, guys. You the best. Also, government, pay them more. Number 93. It's not just hedgehogs, though, that the NHS have to deal with. On average, 488 people are injured by zips and 3,078 people are injured by slippers every year in the UK. They are dangerous, though. Look at them. Ooh, don't trust them. Number 94. Asgard seems to be a big hit here, sadly for all you Garys out there. The name Gary is, as of 2013, less popular in the UK than both the names Thor and Loki. Number 95. England was part of the shortest war in history. They fought Zanzibar in 1896, and Zanzibar surrendered after 38 minutes. Number 96. A relative of Shakespeare on his mother's side, Edward Arden, was arrested for plotting against Queen Elizabeth I. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London and executed there. Write a poem about that, Willie. Number 97. Speaking of old Bill Shakespeare, he only left his wife one thing in his will. It says, I guy unto my wife my second best bed with the furniture. I hope that bed was okay. Sorry, Anne Hathaway. No, not that one, the other. Yeah, there you go. Number 98. With 37 plays, 154 sonnets, the plays that he collaborated on, and the lost plays, Shakespeare wrote an average of 1.5 plays a year since he first started in 1589. That's all very well and good, but could he do 101 facts about any given topic? Probably. Number 99. This fact is something that you can repeat word for word in order to sound cleverer. You're welcome. Here we go, ready? <clears throat> Shakespeare is most often referred to as a playwright of the Elizabethan era, but his most popular plays were written after Elizabeth's death. His later plays show distinct characteristics of the Jacobean dramas, like, duh, obviously. Number 100. Shakespeare has been credited by the Oxford English Dictionary for introducing around 3,000 words to the English language. It's been estimated that his vocabulary ranged from 17,000 to 23,000 words. Number 101! An Anglophile is not something that puts you on a register, but is rather defined as someone who loves England and Britain. Are you an Anglophile? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I know you've got to this point, and I'll be really, really impressed. Really impressed. I'll, I'll give your comment likes and everything. It's gonna be so good. So good. Anyway, Sam from the future, internet and board, your turn, buddy. That was 101 fans about the UK, and I don't know about you, but I had a lovely time. I really, really did. Hmm, lovely. If you want more 101 fans videos, like I really want a cup of tea, which is quite stereotypical, but what can I say? I'm tired and thirsty. Click on subscribe right now. And also, by the way, click on the bell. You'll get notifications every time there's a new 101 video. <laughs> How good is that? Get with the cool kids, ring my bell. Not like that, I mean, click on the bell, and you get, it's not an actual ding a ling ling bell. It's just. Yeah, you know where it is, you know what to do, you're clever people. Anyway, watch this video I'm about to point to. <laughs>